Hey guys, Delo304 here. Today we're going to be taking a look at my newest acquisition, which happens to be the first generation original iPad. So, there you are. So we are going to be taking a look at this device today. I bought this off eBay for only $42. So, we're going to take a quick look. But first, I'm going to give you a little update. As you can see, my setup has changed a little bit. There will be an update video on this, so don't worry about that. So yeah, I have a new video recording uh, set up, so hopefully should be a little bit better than my usual, uh, better in the lighting department anyway. So anyway, like I said, got this off eBay. This is a 16 gigabyte first generation iPad with 3G support, so that's cool. And I, as you can see, I got the original box with it, and you can see it's running iOS 3.2 on the front of here. Kind of interesting there. So in here, we have the original wrapper for the iPad. It did come with a screen protector, as you can see, but I pulled that off. So the screen is an otherwise mint condition. Came with all the original booklets and stuff. I have the uh, SIM ejector in here, and then we have our booklets, and even the Apple stickers are still in here. Big Apple stickers, so th that's nice. So there's that. I'm just going to leave all that in there for... Um, just kind of to keep it nice. And then it came with a 30 pin as well. So that's that. I'm going to go ahead and stick this stuff back in there. So put all this stuff back in for now. Doesn't really matter. Just wanted to show you all that first before we take a look at the actual iPad. So yeah, as you can see there, iPad, Wi-Fi plus 3G, 16 gig AT&T, model A1337, which I found kind of interesting. So let's get the box out of the way and we'll take a quick look at the little iPad. So, as you can see, this was the original iPad. Very chunky, pretty heavy device, to be perfectly honest. This came out in, I believe, April of 2010, somewhere around there. So, yeah, it rocks an Apple A4 at one gigahertz, and it has 256 megabytes of RAM. So, uh, actually, yeah, I'm pretty sure it does have 256 megabytes of RAM. So this is basically an iPhone 4 with less RAM. So that's that. It's in pretty good shape, this particular one. Like I said, it had a screen protector on it, so we just have these like little lines around the whole display. Other than that, though, it looks pretty good. I believe the oleophobic coating is still somewhat present on this display, which is kind of nice for a five-year-old tablet. Pretty nice there. Um, yeah, like I said, good heft to it. You know, it's in good shape overall. It only has a few scratches on the back, as you can see. And the dock connector actually has a little bit of a dent in it, but it does work. So that's all that matters to me. So it is running iOS 5.1.1 because that is all it officially supports. And this iPad is fully functional. There's really nothing wrong with it. So as you can see, it does work just fine. Let's go into the settings. Go to about. See, it's my iPad. Got 5.1.1 there, which is the, like I said, the latest official iOS for this device. And it doesn't run too bad. I mean, obviously, it is pretty slow. It's it's not too bad, but there is some lag here and there, obviously, because it's only got such a low RAM amount and an A4. Obviously, before the Retina display, the iPad 3 was the first to have the Retina display. And as you can see, now that we're looking at it, I do have my SIM card in here, which is kind of nice. So I have AT&T 3G which I can actually demonstrate here. Let me disconnect from Wi-Fi. You can see it swaps over to 3G on AT&T. Let's go Google Chrome, which is supported. We'll talk about app support in a little bit. So I can go ahead and go to Google, which is kind of redundant in the Chrome browser, but why not? Just for demonstration purposes. Let's click Go. And there you can see it is kind of slow, but it does load Google. And then we can type I don't know, iPad, search for it. And given enough time, bam, there you go. So you have 3G data connection. So that's pretty nice. Someone probably paid extra for that long, long ago. But that is nice. I did have a spare SIM from my LG tablet laying around, so I decided to stick it in here, and it works very well. So in addition to my Nexus 7 2013, I now have two... Um, data connected tablets. <laughs> there you go, setting it up just crashed. That happens sometimes as well. 
the apps, sometimes apps just crash. Speaking of apps, let's talk about it. I only have a few apps on here. I iOS 5.1.1 support really is getting kind of small. So I do have Facebook, the old version of Facebook. These are all old versions of the apps. Google Earth, which hasn't been updated in a couple of years, so it obviously does work. I got the YouTube app, kind of old. This is a really old YouTube app. It still works, though. You can still play videos and stuff. The API still works, unlike the built-in YouTube app on here. And then we have Edge, which is a game, and that's pretty much all I have on it. So I really don't know what I'm going to use this iPad for. I bought it just as a display piece more than anything. It is kind of neat to have the very first iPad. I mean, Apple basically created the tablet market and brought it to the masses. So, yeah, they. it's kind of nice to have this. So, yeah, there you go. There is my little tour of the original Apple iPad. I would like to thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys later.